When I say uncommon, I don't mean stuff like this. I just mean stuff outside of the TypeScript basics that I might not use every day, but it is useful reasonably often. Specifically, these are the things that I find myself using in practical situations. And I'm going to show you specific examples of how I have used them recently. There won't really be any specific ordering or structure here, so let's just dive right in. The first thing is a combination of TypeScript concepts, specifically using key of and in. For example, I had a situation where I was using Chrome's local storage to store some data, but this API is untyped. So first I create a type that represents the keys I want to use to store data and their associated types. When I want to store some data, it can be any one of the keys in this type, so I can use TypeScript's key of to create a type that will match any of those keys. Then I wrap the call to the untyped API with my own method that is typed. It will accept a key that is of the type we just created or an array of those keys, and it also accepts a callback with this interesting type here. By using this type, we are saying that the result returned from the API can be an object containing any of the keys in storage key. And the value associated with those keys will be of the type defined in storage data. Now I can call the API with some type safety and I also have some information about what sorts of values the returned data can be. So we've started probably with the most advanced example, but also the funnest. So the rest of this will be a little bit easier. So the next thing is generics, and these aren't as scary as they might seem on the surface. These funny letters you see in generic types are sort of just like a variable that holds some type rather than explicitly defining a type like a string or number. Instead, T might be a number or a string or some other type. Here we are saying the value should be of type T, whatever that is. What T is, is determined by how this function is used. So in this case, I am passing in an observable that emits a string, so t becomes of the type string. So this concept is extremely useful when you are creating these sort of generic reusable helper methods or libraries. And here I am making use of union types. So I have this setup where messages can be sent back and forth between an app and a Chrome extension, and different types of messages can be sent. So I have a type called message, and that is a union of all my possible types of messages. A union basically serves as an or here. I can give something the type of message and TypeScript will be happy as long as it satisfies one of these specific message types. So if I have my method that is responsible for sending messages, I can give the parameter a type of message to make sure valid data is being sent. So this deals with the data being sent out, but there is another TypeScript concept we can utilize here for when the data is coming back. So rather than sending a message, if I am listening for a message, I know it will be of type message, but TypeScript doesn't know specifically what kind of message it will be. If I try to access destinations on that message, for example, TypeScript is going to freak out because whilst that will be fine on certain types of messages, it won't be fine for all possible messages. So the data returned might actually be a type that doesn't include a destinations property. In this case, I know what specific type of message it is going to be, so I can use as to let TypeScript know as well, and then this all becomes fine. Using as like this or anytime we are telling TypeScript what something should be is a bit dicey. We're basically saying, just trust me, which isn't that much better than just using an any type. This isn't completely unsafe though, because if I tell TypeScript to interpret this message as something, it won't let me do it if there isn't sufficient overlap with the message type. For example, if I tried to type it as an object that had properties that did not exist in the message union at all, it wouldn't let me do it. So whilst we're bending the rules of TypeScript, I may as well throw the non-null assertion operator in here as well. This is something I do all the time. So it's similar in theory to as, except this is for situations where TypeScript thinks something can be null, but we know it definitely won't be. In that case, we just slap an exclamation mark on it and TypeScript is happy. Again, this is one of those things you need to be careful with and not abuse. TypeScript utility types are also often useful and are worth being familiar with. There are others, but the ones I use most often are pick and partial. So pick allows us to take a type and create a new type with only specific properties from that type. In this case, I'm saying I want to take the checklist type and create a new type that only includes the title property not the ID property. You can also use omit, which is sort of the opposite. Rather than saying what to include, you can say what to exclude. 
So I probably should be using omit here actually, as my goal is to remove the ID, which isn't generated until after the user has supplied the data to create the checklist. And partial is similar, except that it will create a type where all properties of the original type are optional. That means rather than having to specify all the properties to satisfy the type, we can provide any of them or none of them. This next one is supposedly called a lookup type. I only know the name of it because I asked ChatGPT. It is similar to the utility types we just looked at, but there is an important difference. For example, in this case, I am creating a new type that has the type of whatever the ID type is within the checklist type. So this is different to the pick utility type, which would result in the type being an object that contains an ID. The lookup type will result in a type that is simply the type of whatever ID is. In this case, that means the resulting type will just be a string. The last one I want to briefly mention is type guards. Uh, basically, it allows you to write a test for a value, and if it passes the test, you grant it the type. So let's say I want to test if any particular value should satisfy the number type. In this case, I am saying that if this predicate returns true for a particular value, then that value should now be accepted as being of the type number. You can kind of read this code as value is a number if the predicate is true. You can write any sort of test and assign any kind of type that you like. So there are still other concepts I utilize from time to time, and I know there is all sorts of TypeScript wizardry out there, but these have generally served me very well. All right, that's it for this one. Uh, please consider leaving a like or subscribe if you found this video useful at all, and I hope to see you again for the next one.